I'm so excited for springtime in Colorado. I really want to take my boat on the lake. Oh, it's great. It's warm. It's time to have fun. Oh, I thought that was a snowball. That is a boat? It is a boat. Okay, well, we've got some maintenance we got to do. I got the RV there too, and we want to get ready so we can have fun and not have problems when we get to where we're going. That's right. It's never that easy, right? We got to prepare our trailers for summer. And the top tips on how to prepare your trailers is coming up right now. The newer trailers like this one, this is a 2016, a lot of them have gone to a nitrogen filled tire, which is nice. I mean, that's what the race cars use. It's a, it's, it gets rid of the water inside your tire. It doesn't leak down as fast as air does. It has several things about keeping your tires preserved that I like about nitrogen, but you can also dilute it with air. It won't hurt anything. And that's been my problem. I'll go someplace in the middle of nowhere with no nitrogen. I'll end up putting some air in my tires and then I get that mix. You want to also check your lug nuts. Now these are aluminum wheels and aluminum can, expands and contracts, so those nuts can loosen up. These are a pilot wheel, and so it's really important to keep these traders torqued. I mean, you might want to do it every couple thousand miles. On an aluminum wheel, I would start off doing it every 200 miles because they do expand and contract with the heat and the cold. So you want to torque them down. Steel wheels are a little better about staying tight. On Andre's snowball trader, he calls it a boat trader, but he's got steel wheels that have been chromed, so these kinds will stay tighter, but you still want to check them because they are stud pilot. Now, we looked these up and they're supposed to stay at 50 PSI, so you want to do it on the cold side. We're doing it on the hot side because we need some sun for the camera. So these are going to read a little higher than 50 if he's got them actually filled right. You see what that is? Those are showing 40. So you're probably a little under and we're on the hot side, so you need to air these up. And that's a good thing. In six months, there's a lot of things need maintenance. I mean, these will probably lose two or three pounds a month, what they can leak down when they're sitting there. Now, you also want to, like I was talking about on the other trailer, you want to torque your wheels and you do it in you know an X pattern from side to side not all the way around but we've got this one set at 80 pounds that's where I think these size nuts will go and I go across and I go up here and down and then down you do that star pattern it's called well, why I call it an X because it's actually a star this is the last one and it's clicked and it's worked now those are in good shape you know, a lot of places you go to get your tire fixed, they will torque the hell out of those things, and then you and your wife can't take your little star wrench out and take the tire off. So, I, you know, I, I like to stay at the right weight, or the right poundage on your torque wrench so you can get them off. And um, this is the second season on these set of tires, but they can actually rot and, you know, from not being used, right? That's right, dry rot. They rot the side, you'll see cracks in the side. And that's like now when you buy tires, there is actually a date on them when they were built, so you can check to see how old they are. Because, yeah, you can have a nice looking set of tires that are all cracked in a sidewall or the inside sidewall, and they will blow on you, and changing tires on the road is no fun. Now it's spring, and you want to go camping. Well, if you did things right last winter, you winterize your whole water system. And that basically means draining the water, all your tanks, your, your, water, your fresh water tank, your gray tank, your black tank. And then you get this RV antifreeze. This is what you want to use. You don't want to use regular antifreeze. Regular antifreeze propylene glycol will make you go blind and do other funny things to your body. So you get the right kind of stuff. This is drinkable. You want to drink a lot of it, but that's what it's for. And in the winter, that's in your lines. Now you got to take it all out. So there's two lines down here, if you can see them, it's a hot and a cold. Those are the two lowest lines on the trailer. So now you drain those out and that gets this RV antifreeze out of the system. Of course you want to put it in a can of some kind. Um, but that's the first thing you drain. The next thing you drain is all the things you bypassed in your hot water heater. So you, you, there's a plug over on this side that you drain that, it drains the tank, it's a six gallon tank and there's a bypass. Now you can also put a hose on that, put a nipple on it and drain that. A lot of people don't drain the bypass, but this is you're trying to get all the antifreeze out that you possibly can. And then you'll be ready to fill everything up. But anyway, then you want to put your fresh water in there because you're going to be flushing the system out. And after you put uh, the water in your fresh water tank, then you'll go in and you'll turn on your water pump and you will run the cold first through all your faucets and through your shower and through your, the shower sink in there. 
run that out till it runs clear till it doesn't look this color whichever color you want to call that let's see we'll turn on the water pump which is right here so who makes this trailer this is forest river it's called their work and play i really like this it's a heavy duty trailer you know a lot of <laughs> of toy haulers are made kind of like a regular RV. They're kind of light, a lot of lumber in them. This one here is aluminum walls, frame, steel roof, steel floor. So you'd first want to do the cold one. I turn the pump on. So you hear the pump in the background. It automatically will come on when it needs pressure. You can see how clear that is because this is a brand new trader. We have not put the antifreeze in it. So you want to go around all of them first, including the shower and run the cold water tank. That's what you would do. And then you can go through and uh, there's a bypass line in here that you want to switch to the water goes to the hot water tank and then you turn on your hot water tank and let that flow through till you see the uh, color change clear. Now in an RV when you go camping if you go out in the wilderness like we do not necessarily in a trailer park you want really good batteries and you know you'll charge off of your 110 outlet they'll trickle charge off your truck and then we're going to put a generator on here but good set of batteries. This here is two deep cycle. Actually, they are called uh, the golf cart batteries. They're six volt, not 12 volt. We hook two of them together, and that gives us more drawdown power. A regular deep cycle battery will pull down a lot. These will actually go all the way down to zero, and you can charge them back up, where a lot of those other deep cycles, if you pull them down too far, you killed the battery, and it takes a lot of miracles to make them come back. But on these batteries, you want to check for corrosion on every electrical connection you have, whether it's plugged into the truck, plugged into the, to the shore, or the batteries, make sure there's no corrosion on it. And these batteries are really cool. For maintenance, they have this little finger tab that you actually roll back and forth, and that unplugs all three holes at the same time. Now, you know with batteries, these have gaskets on them, and they're made to, to stay tight. But you can see this first cell, you can already see the, even brand new batteries, you can see the, the lead cores in there, the lead plates. And they should never be open like that. It should always be covered in water. And you don't use regular water, you use distilled water. So you gotta get the good stuff, the distilled, and then you fill them up to the bottom ring inside that hole. Now on the roof, this one, it's got steel framework up there and, and the floor, but there's a one piece aluminum wall, just like that Logan Coach trader we used, just like a horse trader, one piece aluminum all the way, no seams, and then there's coves on the corner. Now, this is another thing you wanna remember, when you're on top of the roof, go up there on your hands and your knees. Don't go walking up there and make me 280 pounds. Sometimes between the stringers, you might cause a dent. You don't want to do that. So you want to go up on your hands and knees, check out the vents. Like this one here, there's two plastic vents on that. You know, if you get into a hail storm or something happens that cracks, you can go up there and check all of your vents, check your seams. And on this one piece of aluminum floor or aluminum roof, you would go around the outside edge by the aluminum coves that go over the, the edge of the cap and check, see if anything's cracked, check your seams around your TV antenna, your vents, everything, and just see if anything needs recocked or, or touched up a little bit. Yeah. Now I have an interesting story about this boat trailer. I've had this boat and trailer for a few years, and two years ago I was on the road in my neighborhood and I heard a loud pop, and I had a bearing failure. Basically, the bearing was rusted, it failed completely, the wheel was almost off, Thankfully, I was going slowly in the neighborhood. I was able to pull off quickly and see the problem. And that required actually replacing the axle itself because the spindle was part of the axle. So that was a big problem. You don't want to have those problems. So you need to check your bearings every spring before you get to the lake. Anderson Hitch also sent me these rapid jack and if you have torsion axles like the Logan Coach Horse Trader, you put it on like this because you only have to lift it up a couple inches. This has a leaf spring, a shackle set of leaf springs with an equalizer in the middle just like the boat. For these, you turn it over. And that will lift up. This will drive on there, suspending that axle in the air so I can spin it and do my, my things with my grease gun in the easy lube grease circuit in the middle. I'll show you how that works. So for wheel maintenance, this is another big deal for spring, getting ready so you're, you're having fun down the road and not fixing everything. Because wheel bearings is a, is a constant problem just like tires are. And this has Dexter Easy Lube axles, which I have on a lot of my trailers. And I put a lot of miles on them. And so on my trailers, 
I do, what you can do with these, you pop this little cap off the end, and then now you have another nipple, a rubber nipple, and the idea is to do this without taking the cap off, because these caps are hard to get off. Uh, you gotta take the wheel off. So you wanna try to do everything from this that little cap. So there's a rubber nipple. And then all I do, that's one reason I jacked up, because I wanna spin that tire. So I'll put the grease zerk in after I've got it cleaned up, put it on the zerk. These are new Zerks, so they are tight. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's all you do is you get Put these. There. there we go. I got. It. I wasn't. I was probably aiming at the wrong thing. That's what she said. <laughs> so I got the grease gun on there, and then I spin the tire, and as I spin it, I pump it about four times, and I keep spinning it, and that allows that grease to go in there and land where I want it between the bearings. If you grease it too much, then it goes out the back seal and gets all over your brakes. And it's kind of, of a, a wild thing that happens quite often to people. It's like these are Dexter axles, okay? The people at Dexter, they'll grease the axle a little bit. Your dealer gets a hold of it, or the manufacturer in this case, would get a hold of it next. And they're trying to do the good thing, so they might shoot a couple squirts of grease in there. And then you get it to the dealer and he's trying to help you out, so he'll put a couple squirts in there. And I've had brand new axles, brand new trailers, and we put them on a, a, a brake testing machine and they all failed. Well, three out of four would fail. You pull the hubs and everything's covered in grease. So that's why you only want to do like four squirts. And that's this way of doing it. The other way of doing it, if you have time, and it's probably a better way of doing it, is you take everything off the wheel, you take the hub off. You've seen Andre and I do the uh, segment on packing wheel bearings. And that's what you do. You take off all those assemblies and that way you can inspect your brakes and then you can pack your bearings, put it all back together, adjust your brakes, and do all that. That's a very good thing to do every spring if you're using your trailer quite a bit. Me, I've done it this way for decades, you know, and I'll put 50,000 miles on a trailer without touching a bearing. So it's worked for me, but that's, that's part of the design of the Easy Lube axle is so that you can conveniently do that. Okay, and how about propane? Propane. I love propane. This is two big 30 pound tanks too. These are big ones. I like these. You can take these off. There's a little pocket at the top if you want to just check the valves. And then this automatically will switch. You can decide which side you want it to start on. And that tells you green and red. So I've got to start it on this one. But these are big tanks. And so you want to take these filled. This type you want to take someplace have them filled. You don't want to trade them in at Walmart because they don't have these big tanks. And you want all the propane you can get on here. Make sure this is tight. Holds these on here. So you can go a long time on these. Yes, I can. I could go camping for at least a full week from what we do. And you have a power jack here? Yes, this is uh, an ultra fab jack. Uh, I like this. I had this on the Logan Horse Trader, another jack just like this, ultra fab, but it wires into the battery on the trailer. This one, you don't wire into anything. So when you want to use it, you just unplug your truck and you plug this into your truck plug and that's where it gets the juice and it goes up and down and has lights on it. So it's such a quick and easy, I mean, you can install this in five minutes. The outdoors are right there. You can see the mountains. But it's also a lot of maintenance work, isn't it? That's true. It's amazing. The more vehicles you get, the more toys you get, the more maintenance you have. It's kind of like marriage. Oh, geez. You got to keep up on things. All right. If you want to have fun, you got to pay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is Andre. And Kent with MrTruck.com. And go back to TFLTruck.com for more news, views, and real-world reviews. And, of course, all kinds of fun things we do with trailers and trucks. That's right. We pull a lot of trailers, a lot of kinds of trailers. Howdy, folks. Nathan Adlin here with the Fast Lane Truck. And look at this, a 2008 Ford F-350. Now what's it doing here? Well, we're at Bandemir Speedway and it's going to take on Run What You Brung. That's right, it's gonna go on the direct strip and that's coming up next. <laughs>